Hello everyone, Luna Wolf here. Welcome to the week 2 episode for the Metamorph and 3.9 Challenge League. As always, I will try to provide a text release for this episode a few days after the video release. Creating the entire video as a write-up takes a few extra days of work. I sincerely apologize for this inconvenience. For viewers that prefer an audio-only version of the Chaos Report, you'll be able to find it over on my Patreon now since last week. Don't worry if the audio-only version is entirely free for now. This is a service that was requested and I don't have any current plans to lock up behind a paywall. You'll be able to find a link to the text and voice-only versions in the descriptions down below once they've been completed and uploaded. The audio-only version should be available immediately upon release of this video. A quick reminder, you can also find the timestamps to each section in the pinned comment down below. Do keep in mind that this entire video is based on educated guesses or predictions, and as such, they might not be entirely accurate. Furthermore, I might miss a thing or two that seem obvious to many and for that I apologize, it's hard to cover literally everything. If I do miss something you think is important, leave it in the comments down below. And what that means, of course, is invest at your own risk. With the usual disclaimer out of the way, let's jump right in. The first segment breaks down currencies and commodities, such as the new exalted orbs and fragments. I'll be giving a quick overview on the most important currencies during the past week and predictions on how they'll likely continue to progress in this following one. First up, exalted orbs. The original exalted orb has followed our predictions from last week to the letter and has risen to a respectable 145 chaos price point by now. Comparatively to last week, they've priced about 20 to 25 chaos lower. I've explained this discrepancy in last week's episode, so if you're wondering why the Exalted Orbs aren't worth as much as last league, check out the week 1 video. In the current league, they've been rising at a slower rate, having intermittent intervals of plateauing before continuing their rise with a 5 to 10 chaos bump before plateauing again. This is not an uncommon behavior for currencies that are gaining value over time, and does not seem to be related to any kind of overabundant currency gains. A comparison that can more directly showcase this is the Legion League's exalted prices, which had extremely rapid growth spurts due to an overabundance of chaos at the time. These growth spurts were showcased as nearly continuous rise between plateaus, which only occurred after multiple days of continuous inflation. They will likely continue the rise in the aforementioned fashion for the foreseeable future. However, we're unlikely to see them reach the 180 plus ranges for the first few for the first weeks. The supply and demand of some is simply not as lopsided as in previous leagues, as their use cases have been heavily diminished and alternatives have been added, which results in the prices having a lower ceiling than before. I would expect the 150 chaos to 170 chaos price point by next week, but they might top out earlier. It is still difficult to say how the new exalted orbs will impact the prices of the OG exalted orb this early after they've been added to the game. We'll be able to make more precise predictions in the following weeks once we thoroughly understand their influence on the OG orb. As always, make sure to check those prices on the daily, as I can't possibly give you accurate predictions for them via a one per week video series. As for the new exalted orb and awakener orbs, let's take a look at them. Still the most expensive one of the new orbs is the hunter's exalted orb. It is currently sitting around 495 chaos after seeing a drop from its extremely rapid rise that occurred around the middle of the last week. This rise was caused by an exploit that people used in conjunction with the Awakener Orb to create incredibly powerful and ridiculous items very easily. This exploit has since been fixed, which caused all the special Exalted Orbs to drop in prices again, as they had been bought up in bulks for said crafting purposes. I still see this Exalted Orb as the most popular option, even over the Awakener Orb, at the current moment in time, as it plain and simply provides access to the best mod pool in history of Passive Exile. We'll likely see them drop back down to their pre-exploit 410 to 420 chaos price point. This is just a rough estimate, as previously mentioned, due to the fact that these items are extremely new and it's hard to gauge their exact worth, as we don't really have drop rates for them yet and know very little about them in general. The Awakener Orb is currently sitting at around 282 chaos after the hotfix. As mentioned in the Hunter Orb rundown, there has been a gigantic leap in prices around the middle of the last week due to the exploit becoming public knowledge and players trying to quickly cash in on the amazing possibilities the exploit provided. Since it has been fixed though, the Awakener Orbs have returned to their old pre-exploit values and risen by about 10c comparatively to last week. I would still imagine these orbs to rise in the coming weeks as more and more people get to the point where they're willing to invest large amounts of currency into their characters and craft mirror-worthy items, but for now, I don't see this orb leaping above the 350 chaos price point during this following week, barring any unforeseen use cases that suddenly become public knowledge through content creators or otherwise. 
Crusader and Warlords Exalted Orbs have also seen a similar bump around the Wednesday to Thursday area of last week, but have since then dropped down to 282 Chaos each. Due to their very similarly useful nod pools, these two will likely continue to stay near each other's price points. As of the moment I'm scripting this script, they're exactly as expensive as the other. From what I can tell so far, the Conqueror Exalted Orbs seem to only drop from Awakener level 4 plus boss fights, with an increased chance per Awakener level above 4. I have no real data to back this up, aside from anecdotal evidence and reports from my own community, so if you got any data on that, on this that contradicts this information or, or confirms it, please feel free to leave a comment down below. They are likely continue to share the third slot for most popular Exalted Orbs for the remainder of the League. Expect their prices to continuously rise slowly, at least for the next week. Lastly, the Redeemer's Exalted Orb. As I had predicted last week, it has now fallen below the OG Exalted Orbs in terms of prices, after its rapid descent post Awakener Hotfix and itself and found itself at a 140 chaos price point. In general, the mods from the Redeemer are quite lackluster, despite offering some unique options for very particular builds. Comparatively to the rest of the orbs, however, the Redeemer is simply lacking the same generalistic itemization potential, which can be found on all the other orbs, including the OG one. Things such as Culling Strike, Tailwind, or the Ancestral Call for Gloves are nowhere to be found in this particular mod pool. The only thing the Redeemer Orb does better than others is to provide elemental penetration for cold abilities and general scaling for that particular niche of characters. As always, if you intend on buying any of them, make sure to keep an eye on this extremely volatile market space and rank them in your own order so you know which is the best bang for your own buck. Alteration Orbs are currently going at a 1 to 7 ratio, which is exactly the price we predicted last week, as it's following the price structure from Bright League to the T. The aforementioned influence types of Exalted Orbs are responsible for this high price for them. Despite the multimodding and alt regaling for the purposes having been diminished by the 3.9 changes, players have been relying on Alteration plus Regal crafting to get the extremely powerful influence mods, as that's a ton cheaper than trying to get them using Fossils or Chaos Orbs. Many of the most popular influence mods are extremely rare to roll, and as such, alteration orbs are the primary way of getting them, this early into the league. As a result, we will consult the price graph for last league's alteration orbs, as their supply-demand situation seems to be pretty much exactly the same based on the first two weeks so far. If this is indeed the case, that the alteration orbs will follow the graph of Blight, then we can expect them to rise to around a 1 to 6 or 1 to 5 ratio in the coming week. I hope you took a my advice last week and stocked up on them, while they were still cheap. It's likely too late now to get any of them for a better ratio than a 1 to 7 or 1 to 8 for the remainder of the league, if Blight is anything to go by. My usual reminder, if they reach the 1 to 6 or 1 to 5 ratio, make sure to pick up a few more rare items per map, as it'll be worth the time to sell them for extra alteration shards after each map, at least for the slower players. Last on our list of currencies, the Ancient Orb. After a rather steady rise, they've now found themselves at a pretty solid 36 to 38 chaos price point. As mentioned last week, this is due to the headhunter prices stalling during the past few days as well. They have remained rather steady, only dipping a tiny bit. Since the Ancient Orbs are directly responsible for the supply and demand game of the headhunter and nemesis Zana mod leagues, their prices are inherently linked. Additionally, if we compare the prices to last league, we can see a similar picture to the prices for this league. Considering that the alteration prices have lined up nearly 1 to 1 to last league, and the ancient ore prices being pretty close as well, we can assume that the economy for these is rather similar comparatively to last league. Following that train of thought, we can take a peek into the potential future by looking at the past league's data. Ancient orbs stayed at this price point for about 3 to 4 days, and then rapidly rose towards the 49 chaos mark, where it remained for a short while before dipping down to 45 chaos again. If you want to, spay, to play the speculation game, this data is the most accurate I can give you. Do with it what you think is the best option. My recommendation? If you've held onto your Ancient Orbs so far, you can probably stomach another week. It's unlikely that the Headhunter will lose a drastic amount of value, and as a result, it's unlikely that the Ancient Orbs will drop a huge amount either. Hold onto them until they reach a 45 Chaos Plus price point. Then consider selling them, or sell them if they haven't moved in about a week. And of course, always remember to save up a few of them at once and sell them in bulk. This can give you 3 to 5 extra chaos per orb, which makes a big difference. Shaper fragments range from 40 to, 40 to 55 chaos, meaning that one shaper set will net you around 200 chaos at average. This is pretty much the exact same price as last week. 
The amount of players that have reached the Shaper fight seems to correlate nearly exactly with the amount of fragments that drop for those that don't fight Shaper. As a result, the supply and demand seems to be at an equilibrium for now, meaning that there are no real swings in either direction for prices. On the other hand, however, the fragments dropped by Shaper, which unlock Uber Elder, have each risen by about 10 to 30 chaos, to a 170 to 175 price point each. For simply beating the Shaper and having a chance for any of his drops, which are pretty valuable this league, you're only really paying about 25 to 30 chaos. This is absolutely worthwhile to do. All you need is roughly one decent drop every 5 to 6 runs. That's definitely in the realm of statistical profitability. As alluded to, the Uber Elder Fragments provided by Shaper are sitting at around 170 to 175 chaos each, while the ones provided by Elder are sitting at around 39 chaos. That means one Uber Elder set will cost you about 400 to 450 chaos at average. This leads to extremely high prices on a lot of the Uber Elder only drops, such as the Eternity Shroud or the Void Fletcher. Similar advice here to last week. If you're willing to gamble and got a good grasp of the mechanics of Uber Elder so you don't brick any of them, there's a ton of money to be made by running him, for now. Especially hitting the right Val Orb on a Void Fletcher can net a really decent sum of currency for you, which we'll cover later. The Elder Fragments themselves are sitting at around 25 to 39 chaos each, meaning that one set will cost you around 120 to 140 chaos. Right now, I would still recommend running your own Elder sets and selling the resulting items to other players. The physical and chaos and presences are still fairly popular and can recoup some of your investment. Additionally, the resulting Uber Elder Fragments will come in handy for your own Uber Elder attempts or recouping some of the costs of running out the Elder fights. If you manage to get a Watcher's Eyes drop, for example, they're extremely worthwhile at the moment, as less of them exist than ever before. It seems that these fragments are staying fairly steady at the current prices, slowly rising due to general chaos inflation, which is nothing out of the ordinary. I'd expect them to stick around this price point for a while. Lastly, the Synthesis unique maps are all sitting around 30 to 38 chaos right now, with the exception being the Cortex, of course, which has seen a drastic increase in prices towards the 180 chaos mark. This is likely a result of the increase in popularity and, thus, prices for the Bottle Faith as well as the Maloney's Mechanism, which are both unique limited to the Synthesis areas and bosses. The, map, the maps overall are very worth it to run for yourself if you're keen on gambling, as the Synthesis modifiers provided by the maps can be a real hit or miss thing. Sometimes you'll get close to an exalted orb worth of currencies and commodities, whereby other times you'll barely get a few chaos. However, the bosses are very much worth your efforts, as especially the Herald Rings oftentimes net upwards of a few Exalted Orbs at prices, with the right combinations and implicits. The prices for the Cortex will likely continue to be bound to the two unique items mentioned, and as such, you might want to keep an eye on them for now to know whether or not you want to sell a Cortex or run it instead. With those currencies and commodities covered, let's move on to our unique item watchlist. Unlike last week, I'll be a bit more focused with my intent for the watchlist to provide a better viewing experience, rather than simply repeating the same things every week with different prices. The watchlist will of course be reworked once the meta has calmed down a bit into something you're more used to. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this approach, as I'm trying to diversify the Chaos Report a little bit and make it more timing appropriate, wherever I can. Since last week, two of our watch items have shown to be a dud, and will be removed from, from it for now, barring any unforeseen changes to the meta. Both items are heavily reliant on a strong bow focus meta, which is clearly not the case for this league. Hirizaya has seen a drastic decline in prices from its last week prices of around 210 chaos to a rather meager 127 chaos. This drop in prices is simply due to an overabundance of them, and there being very little demand for it due to most players avoiding the bow playstyle for now. This may potentially change in the future, but depending on how much supply there is for this body armor going forward, we might not see it again for the league. Death's Opus has seen a similarly drastic decline in prices, due to similar reasons. It's a great starter bow for rangers, but it usually gets replaced later on, as more of them started to show up and less of them were needed due to less and less players being drawn towards the bow playstyle as new players, the prices for these dropped. They've gone from their 210 chaos price point of the last week to still rather respectable 137 chaos. The bow will likely remain above the 100 chaos price point for a while, but is unlikely to see huge future price jumps. With those two items removed, let's move on to the remaining watch list and add a new item to it, to keep track of the right matters. First up on our list, Double Socketed Tomb Fists. 
And Toonfans have followed our predictions from last week and have seen a further increase in their prices. They've recently cracked the 275k mark and are projected to continue their price rise. They're extremely popular chases for any attack based builds, of which quite a few have seen decent popularity recently, with the rise of puncture gladiators and similar build archetypes. As mentioned last week, with the league progressing and more people switching to attack based builds, they are likely going to increase in price over the next few weeks as well. Compared to last league, however, the prices are nowhere near what they used to be. At the same point in time last league, they were already reaching the low 500 chaos mark. We're unlikely to see similar prices for them throughout this league, but I wouldn't be surprised to see them get close to the maybe 400 chaos mark in the next month or so. To farm them, I would recommend buying up a ton of sextants and sextanting your watch zones to try and get as many guaranteed abysses as possible. The new Awakened Sextants even has a mod that gives you two abysses per map instead of the usual one. Make sure to run those abysses on tier 16 maps and remember that you can unsocket the watch zones and replace it with another if you aren't running tier 16s for later usage. Also keep in mind that ghastly and searching agiles are extremely worthwhile to craft on. Very easy to hit on run rolls that are worth a dozen or more chaos with just a few alts and regal attempts. The Void Fleshy Unique Bow is next up on the list. While the Squiver has seen a price drop since last week, it is still locked behind the Uber Elder fight, meaning that its worth is likely going to stay at least above the 500 chaos mark for the foreseeable future. It's currently sitting at around 720 chaos, but is projected to potentially drop farther in the following week. Another important aspect to the, we uh, to the Void Fletcher is that oftentimes, players will try to corrupt away from the Pierce Implicit, as it can ruin some builds, if the it attacks Pierce enemies rather than get stuck in them. Successfully corrupted Void Fletchers in that manner are way more expensive than the base version of the bow. They will easily score prices at the 12 plus X area, with some specific implicit corruptions even reaching multiple dozen exalts and even to up to a whole mirror for specifically the additional arrow implicit. If you intend to corrupt this item, I would highly advise the corruption chamber in Alva's temple, as the double implicit can really bump the price and usability of the quiver. The last unique item list for today is the Coast Breeze Malice. This sword has been covered in last league's episodes as well, and is a staple in the Castle and Crit playstyle. It is usually used by Cycloners in combination with the Ice Nova skill, as Cyclone is the fastest hitting ability in the game that can reliably trigger, and Ice Nova being the best cold based AoE skill. This leads to the builds having a huge amount of clear with very little work necessary to keep it up. The Coast Breeze Mali is currently sitting at around 6x, or about 840 chaos, and is likely going to see a farther price increase, as it has displayed since the start of the league. The reason for the high price is mostly due to the fact that the Coast Breeze Mallet is one of the few unique items in the game that has no real way to target farm it. As a consequence, this item will only be useful to this analysis as a way to keep track of the cast on crit meta, rather than an actual advice bid for farming purposes. Now, moving on to the third segment for this video, the meta analysis. Since last week, we've seen even more summoners join the ladder while pushing farther away from the Sabatel brothers. Their commands are up to a 27% play rate, which is a 3% up, while Saboteurs are down by 3% to a 14% play rate. Many players have realized that most builds are more difficult to scale into the higher tiers of maps and bosses, and as such have resorted to the easy way out, that being the summoner playstyle. Since Blight League, the summoner playstyle has been incredibly powerful, way too much so in my opinion, with very, very little investment. This is also the case for many SSF players, as it becomes even more difficult to properly gear the other playstyles with proper gear. As a result of this progression, we'll be focusing on minion-based items and mods even more than last week with our crafting, while also still retaining our slight focus on spell damage increases for the cast on crit and saboteur players. I would still expect the future of the meta to shift away from summoners, but with the high difficulty of the league and expansion, it could also lead to even more players resorting to the overpowered summoner playstyle in instead. As such, for now, just continue with the minion items for now. I'll update you again next week and we'll take another look at the meta at that point. As for the Atlas analysis, let's take a look. My personal recommended sectors to farm are Lyra, Arthane, Turn's End, and Lex Proxima. Those three sectors provide a great variety of layouts that are extremely easy and valuable to run, as well as, as offering the ability to drop high-level unique maps such as High Tier Poor Joys or Coward's Trials. The Cow's Trial especially has seen a huge amount of popularity during this league and has reached prices upwards of 70 to 80 cows already. The reason for this is that the Cow's Trial, when run at the tier 14 version, represents one of the highest experience per hour options in the game, due to the nature of the map increasing the monster level per cleared floor by one. 
At the last level, the map is equal to a tier 17 in terms of experience gain and item drops. It can be dropped at this tier once you've socketed all four watchstones into the tiers and citadel. Outside of the full 8 awakening level farming, there have been a few strategies that have crept up here and there in regards to the atlas, which we'll cover in the strategy discussion following this section. Remember to properly advance your atlas and sages. Don't try to immediately full socket any given area of the atlas. You won't be able to gain the required tier 12 plus maps to drop any of the newly revealed tier 14 plus maps. Always try to go up one watchstone at a time, and try to keep most of the atlas on the same level. With the meta and atlas analysis finished, let's jump right into the strategy discussion for this week. I'll be covering a few different farming strategies that have shown up over the past week. Big thanks to Carve, by the way, for pointing them out to me in last week's text re version release. While I was aware of more most of these, it was nice to have a more in-depth explanation to each of them from one of PoE's finest. Thank you, Carve. There are a total of four different strategies that have been recognized as more or less viable in the current Atlas meta so far. The first one is one that I've been recommending since the start of the league, which is basically the full clear and boss chase strategy. For this strategy, you do exactly what it says. You try to clear your entire Atlas, suck at every citadel fully, and chase the conquerors around the Atlas to gain their drops, extra maps, and the access to the Uber Saurus fight. This is a very solid strategy that has been widely regarded as the best for most players, as the currency, experience, and potential per hour is one of the highest out of any of the strategies that I'll be presenting here. In order to take advantage of this strategy, however, you will require a very powerful build, as your entire time spent on the Atlas will likely be in tier 14 pluses, as those are the only maps that will be able to spawn your influence. One caveat to this, however, is that you can speed up the bossing process and neglect the map gains heavily by taking advantage of a current oversight on GGG's part. The oversight works as follows. When you have influence in an area, aka the background is colored and you found any of the conquerors for the first time in an area, you are able to run any version on the map's inset area in order to bait him into a fight and unlock the boss fight way quicker. The reason for the speed increase is not only due to the fact that you're running lower level maps, such as tier 1s instead of tier 14s, but also the fact that you can simply glacier farm the maps. Meaning, you go in, kill 3-4 to four packs, and leave the map immediately to open a new one, if the exile hasn't appeared at that point. The conquerors can only spawn at the beginning of a map, essentially confirming to you their presence after 3 or 4 packs at best. This can also be used to great effect in conjunction with the Zana Master missions, as you can simply use up the white Zana missions you have saved up from your previous Atlas progression and run them at the same time. This will allow you to quickly cycle through your Zana shop as you're farming the Exiles to then flipper maps to other players. This can easily make you upwards of 20 or 30 cows per map. Basically all tier 14s and lower maps are worth buying from her, as well as all the special maps such as Synthesis and Guardians. To cycle her shop, you only need to open her map, you don't need to enter it. Talking to her, choosing one of the maps and having her open the portals is enough for the shop to be reset. You can leave the map right after. The second strategy is one that, for most viewers, is already impossible. This strategy involves manipulating the atlas through purposefully not completing specific maps. The only way for most players to get to this strategy would be to start an entirely new account, as your atlas is locked to your normal progression already. I would also not recommend this method of farming, as you'll be locked into two maps in two sectors, drastically lowering your Atlas completion and awakening bonus, as well as requiring you to remove one entire awakening level at all times. The way this strategy works and is used is usually for Burial Chamber Doctor farming. In order to set it up, you simply do not complete any of the maps that share the Burial Chambers tier in the same sector. You also do this for one other map in another sector, such as Port. Once you've completed the rest of the Atlas and acquired all the Watchstones, you then ping-pong the Watchstones between the two sectors. When you're running Burial Chamber, you upgrade the Citadel with all four Watchstones to have it be as Tier 16 on the Atlas, while running maps that are substantially lower, such as the Tier 9 version of it. Meanwhile, you remove all Watchstones on the Port Sector Citadel to, go to get it down to a Tier 9. This will make Port the only Tier 9 on the Atlas, meaning that any and all Tier 9s that will drop from Burial Chambers, as you're running it at Tier 9, will be Ports. Once you've used up all of your burial chambers, you flip the process. You tier 16 the port sector with the stones from burial chambers, so burial chambers is your new and only tier 9 while running the tier 9 ports. It is important to flip the watchstones while you're running it, as otherwise the maps will drop their adjacent uncompleted neighbors. 
The, th the third strategy is a lot more useful for most players. It is only recommended for the really hardcore farmers, however. There is a concept on every atlas called the natural maps. Natural describes the tier of any given map. There are natural tier 1s, tier 2s, tier 3s, and so forth. The natural part here describes them as their base tier, as you'll find them on the atlas for the first time before any watchstones are socketed. Knowing what these natural maps are allows you to take advantage of the Harbinger's Horizon Orb, as the Horizon Orb only works along the lines of the natural tiers. This means that if you use an Horizon Orb on a tier 15, regardless of map you originally used it on, it will only be able to give you a small selection of natural tier 15s. A fellow content creator that many of you will be familiar with from last league, by the name of Grimrow, has created a spreadsheet that I'll be linking to in the description down below, with a list of all natural maps that can be found on the new atlas. Using this list, you can easily define which maps can be run indefinitely as a singular map by the use of Horizon Orbs. A good example would be the natural tier 16 summit. There's only two other natural tier 16s, meaning that every third Horizon Orb at the latest, used on any tier 16 you find, will result in a summit. Horizon Orbs have seen a slight bump in prices due to this farming strategy, but it can still be worthwhile if you know what you're doing. The fourth and last strategy is simply to buy your preferred maps and sell the others. This will involve a ton of trading and as such is not really considered a prime strategy. If, however, you really only want to farm a particular div card, item or layout, then this is the only way for you to do so. Simply sell all your other map drops of the same tier or higher and buy the maps you want to run in bulk. Again, this is not really considered a super viable strategy, but if you specifically build for an individual layout and farming purpose, then this is the best way for you. Another strategy that exists but isn't considered viable is to drop your awakening level in a certain sector that only has a few maps of any given type. This will allow you to somewhat sustain the maps in the sector, but as you're dropping a few awakening levels, you're losing out on a huge bonus that is the awakening system. As a result, this is not a recommended or generally seen as viable option for farming, but for completion's sake, I decided to include it either way. With those strategies covered, I hope that you now have a solid understanding of the early, mid, and late game atlas for the new expansion. If you're a beginner and completely lost on what I was just talking about, please feel free to watch last week's episode on how to get started with the atlas. Additionally, if you have something you would like me to cover on next week's strategy or discussion segment, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. This can range from anything, data related, or strategy research, or simply statistical breakdowns of certain matters or items. I'll try my best to oblige any requests. Otherwise, I'll simply be covering whatever comes up in the meantime in next week's episode. Now, for the last little segment, I'll be covering the weekly delve update, as well as a bunch of rapid fire tips and tricks for this following week. First up, the delve update. As delving is, you know, still one of the best ways to make a large amount of currency in the game, I, I don't think that will ever change. Comparatively to last week, nothing has really changed in the land of Delve. The best fossils to farm are still the corroded, serrated, and shuddering fossils. Etheric, perfect, bound, and prismatic fossils are following closely after. As a result of this ranking, my recommendation stays the same as well. The area you should be focusing on to make the most possible money through selling your fossils to other players will be the Petrified Forest first and the Sulfur Vents second. They drop primarily bound, corroded, and etheric, perfect fossils respectively. Frozen Hollows are also still a very decent money-making choice as well, especially due to their farming simplicity, as the Fractured Walls are very easy to find and get to, and they drop a ton of pristine and prismatic combinations. This is also the only area to reliably obtain the sought-after serrated fossils in larger quantities. The current prices for this week's top fossils are as follows. Corroded fossils have dropped to 13 Chaos. Serrated fossils have risen to 13 Chaos and are now tied with the Corroded's, Shattering fossils have also risen to 10 chaos. Etheric, bound, perfect, and prismatic fossils are going for 7 chaos each. Pristine fossils are still st sitting at their 4 chaos price point from last week. With that, happy fossil hunting and good luck in your delves. Now, getting into the rapid fire tips and tricks section for this video. Create the transcendent jewels. Over the past two leagues, we've been taking a very close look at the transcendent flash. For this league, however, we've opted to not cover it, due to them not being super popular choices. This does not mean, however, that it's not worth anything. The Transcendent Flesh and the other Transcendent Jewels are all worth more than one Exalted Orb at the current moment. On the other hand, however, the Vial of Transcendent and the original Jewels which are required to create these Jewels are about 10 to 15 Chaos combined. This makes a profit margin of at least 120 Chaos per Jewel. As such, 
Use the tier 3 sacrifice rooms in Alva's temple for something useful and a guaranteed reward, rather than hoping for the 1 in a million chance for a belt to drop. You know what belt I'm talking about. Flip maps from Zana's shop. I've already mentioned this earlier in this episode, but as last week, this still is an incredibly lucrative option. You only have to open the Zana map inside of the map you're running to reset the shop. You do not need to enter it, nor do you need to complete her mission. This makes it extremely easy to cycle through her shop in quick succession using yellow or even white master missions as explained earlier and maps. Maps from tier 6 to tier 14 are usually all worth flipping in this manner, netting between 2 to 10 chaos per map on average in this fashion. You can flip through a few dozen maps in a matter of minutes using this system. Convert your unused Azerite into Chaos If you've been delving since the start of the league, you'll likely have saved up a lot of Azerite. Remember that you can always buy an infinite number of Resonators from Nico at the encampment. The current best Azerite to Chaos ratio is the potent Alchemical Resonator. You can translate 500 Azerite into 4 Chaos by buying these and selling them to players. You can increase this profit margin further by selling them in bulk, easily being able to ask for 5 or 6 apiece if you've got a decent sized stack to offer. Using Bound Fossils on High Level Elder Helmets With the minion meta basically continuing from last league, this tip still holds a lot of weight. It is extremely easy to hit multiple of the desired roles using a Bound Fossil plus Dense Fossil combination, or even just spamming Bound Fossils themselves into high level 84 plus Elder Helmets. They do not have to be Bone Helmets, as those are extremely expensive as a base. Any other helmet will do just fine, as long as you hit 2 or 3 of the desired roles such as Minion Life, Minion Damage, Minion Gem Modifiers. And with those last few tips wrapped up, I'll be ending this chaos report. I hope this video was informative and you learned something from it that you can apply to your own game. Please let me know if I missed anything or you would have wanted me to talk about anything specific that I might not have covered. If you want to support the creation of these videos, feel free to check out my Patreon and maybe consider signing up for it, it really helps me out. You can find a link to it in the description down below. Any and all support is highly appreciated. If you have any suggestions for Patreon rewards that you guys would like to see, Please let me know on my Discord's feedback channel, down below this video in the comments, or on my Twitter. I read all of your comments everywhere. You can find a link to my Twitter and Discord down below in the description as well. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell thingamajig, like or dislike the video, and check me out over on twitch.tv slash I stream pretty much every day and will be live throughout this entire next week as well. If you need background noise, I will always be yours. You can find a link to the stream in the description down below as well. And with that, Thanks for watching, and keep farming those exodes.